Hi, Chris. This is Chris Thorpe Tracy and John Pratty in conversation about a derelict Coral, the America Ground residency. Hello, Hi. John. Hi, Chris. Um, let's talk a little bit first about what this project is about. Um, we're here to talk about your artist in residency uh, project in the America Ground in Hastings, funded by Arts Council England. Um, and we're, we're going to be talking for about an hour about how you have developed the project, how you've created the pieces of work that you've created, and also just to show us a little bit of what you've created. So, Chris, can you tell me a little bit, just really quickly, about who you are? Yes, yeah, so I'm uh, Chris Thorpe Tracy. I am a composer and a writer, and I work in a kind of sparse, folky, uh, chorally sort of way. I spent 20 years as a pop singer and gave it up maybe uh, two and a half, three years ago. Um, but at the same time as that, I've done quite a few projects that are more composed and more responding to brief type projects and find myself really enjoying those. And so this is why I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I'll waffle on quite a lot about my process, but I'll also share a couple of excerpts of uh, pieces that I've been working on um, uh, using this keyboard. Uh, before I do though, before I get really into it, um, I'd like to ask John, where did you get the idea from to cover this particular bit of Hastings history. It's quite an unusual bit of history, especially because a newcomer to Hastings would immediately think of an earlier period of history, which is obviously the Battle of Hastings. But this is, um, uh, the America ground is something that grew up at the very beginning of the 19th century. And I wonder why uh, you were interested in that particular bit. And um, in, in a way also, because in modern Hastings, it's not the bit that people think about, like um, it's not as shishi as Hastings Old Town. It's much more like just a kind of corner of the town near the seafront. So what, um, what inspired you to um, organise an artist residency to tell this bit of the story? Well, there's two, two answers to that, Chris. The first one is we've changed quite a lot in this project very recently because of the COVID-19 um emergency yeah, yeah. Now, hence doing this <laughs> we were going to have a showing we were going to uh introduce a public event but what we're now going to be doing is produce these at least three of these conversations online using zoom uh which will be pretty interactive and will inv involve some of the the music that we're creating what started the idea what started the idea was my long-standing interest I guess, in the politics of the 1830s and the 1820s, and how those are mirrored today in the politics of today. It's about um, homelessness, it's about an unfair society, it's about many things that we have today, which they had in the 1820s, 1830s. They had soldiers and sailors returning from the Napoleonic Wars, they were in many cases without work, without houses, and they in many cases were, well, they were, of course, nearly all without the vote. So they had very little going for them and they lived in a very unequal society. So I'm very keen on exploring any parallels between the history of 1825 to 1835 Hastings and the parallels today. And the core of the project was knowing you, Chris, from the nine, you know, from our work together in Brighton um, 10 years or so ago, five or so years or so ago, where I knew you as a, a committed political musician and activist. And it felt to me like the important opportunity in Hastings, following on from some digital work we've been doing, the important opportunity was to bring someone in who could create some work which was accessible, which was in a relatively um, accessible and conventional creative format, as opposed to say digital art or data art or stuff like that. We wanted something which was particularly 
going to get to grips with the more colourful issues and colourful historical occurrences that we know happen. So that's where it came from, Chris. Let's move on to the music now, Chris. Um, so we're going to talk a bit about the pieces that you've, you've, you've put together and your composition process. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about a derelict chorale and how you've gone about making the work. Um, so I was looking for a route into the pieces and I started um, with like the first song I began to come up with and the first route in, and this is a bit um, uh, off piste maybe, but uh, uh, was something called One Plank of Wood and I was tracing the journey of a single plank of wood. And the reason for that is so you can get a plank of wood that's in a, in a tree in a forest, maybe in the forest of Dean or in the new forest near Portsmouth. And you can build a, you chop that tree down and you build a boat and that boat can have a plank of wood on it. And then um, that boat can tootle around the South coast or around the world. And um, during the late, 18th century and the early 19th century we were in the midst of lots of very violent battles between smugglers and uh, the customs and excise men particularly along the south coast and so one of the things that happens at the beginning of the america ground and in fact i'll um i'll use a different song as a I'll, one of the songs i'm going to use as an example in a minute is about this but um there were very violent battles and when the customs and excise men caught a smuggling boat they would run it would be run up on the sea and they would destroy the hull so it was no longer seaworthy so they would cut the hull in half or smash massive hole in the hull so then you've got the same plank of wood sitting on the on the seafront at hastings and then people would use those hulls as a home and people would actually build their house inside this boat hull and also of course there were wrecks there were loads of wrecks it's the most shipwrecked area of the south coast apart from maybe the Isles of Scilly and it's got all these wrecks and so very good quality planks of wood would be washing up all the time on the beach and people would use that as building materials so my one plank of wood then has taken this journey it's now in someone's home in the America ground where it stays right through to the end when the America ground people were evicted and then and this is one of the best bits a lot of the people who were in the America ground when they were evicted they took their whole homes on their backs, like on, on carts, and they literally dismantled their homes because building materials were so precious. And many of them were builders, and many of them were working to build the new town of St. Leonard's on Sea at that point. And they were employed as uh, builders, and they were also skilled craftsmen, so it was within their skill set to do this. They took down their houses, moved to where there was space to live in St. Leonard's, and built their houses again there where some of them still exist to this day. There are, there are a bunch of houses in St. Leonard's on Sea, which I've had a look at, which are built of the same materials. As, and so that was my, my route in when I found it, was this idea that you could have a plank of wood that takes the journey right through the America ground life and end up, ends up in St. Leonard's and is still there now. So that was great, except that uh, it didn't tell any human stories. So. Uh, I was struggling to like, if I, if I do a whole, if I create a whole piece of work, like almost a piece of music theater about a plank of wood, then yes, I can put the stories around it, but they don't quite work as the core. Uh, and then, so now I think I've got one song, which is called One Plank of Wood. And what I'm trying to do at the moment is see if my other songs, which are self-contained songs in a kind of folky, fairly simple style can, have in, injected into them references that mean a plank of wood is there. My starting point was these was very tr trad, and um, and as I learned more stories, that was definitely my way in. Was so I've got this plank of wood. I've got a bunch of people's stories I want to tell that take place in different parts of the American ground. I've got two or three key major events I also want to talk about. So I want to talk about the raising of the flag and I want to talk about the eviction and I want to talk about um, how how it affects now and, and what it means like for example so I'll, I'll actually I'll play a bit of a song now um, one of the things that informs the shape of the America ground is the rope walks uh, or the rope walk the main rope walk and I wanted to do a song about the rope walk um, and this is sort of an example of 
how the song starts off as a, a certain kind of folk song. I'll play maybe a, a, a bit of a verse and, a, and I'll play the chorus. Maybe I'll play a couple of verses and a chorus of, and this is how it first starts. And it's got that a kind of music hall-y, folky, that kind of. Um, I'll start, I won't start at the beginning. Um, so I'll explain what a rope walk is. It's a, um, a rope walk is a really long straight um, pathway that becomes an alleyway mm. where people make rope for ships and it has to be straight and it's very long and they still exist now and um, uh, it's a very hard job making rope it's horrible and it, but it's part of the, the fishing industry and the seafaring industry infrastructure so it's very much needed and also these rope walks which went up uh, at the beginning of this kind of period that we're talking about, a lot of them, although there have been rope walks earlier in history, um, they, when they go up, they go up early in an industrial estate development, and then that industrial estate tends to be kind of built around them. Rope walks of this period still affect the layout of Hastings today. And it's in your eyes and it's in your hair. Hope Hemp dust burns in the open air. Run to the other end fast as you dare. Doing the rope walk tangle. Eight over three and a seven over one. Weave those threads till your rope is done. Don't you step on the side. Don't you step on the fiber sun. Doing the rope walk tangle. So it starts off in this kind of very <laughs> Chaz and Davey, um, rollicking -y vibe. And that's what I... I really liked it. I thought this is what I was doing. So, and when you're done, then you roll that rope to the boatman's door for some cash, you hope. It's Edward Bomer and his brother Joe doing the rope walk tangle. Well, sir, it's worth more, and you hold out your cap. Lad, tell your master his weave is slack. Oh, John Gallup won't pay for that doing the rope walk tangle. And it carries on like that. One of the aspects of this project was looking outwards and making the music simple so that other people could take the music as a sort of starting point and work from it and so i've been i've been like looking at how how i changed the style to try and um partly make it more singable by other people and partly make it more work with by other people and you end up with a kind of more droney thing so i went through this whole slowing it down i mean that's one of the best techniques so that if you are going to have a group of people singing your stuff that's not you you slow it down and at this point in the process i had i had maybe four songs ready and what i was really getting into was the idea of a choir and i suddenly started thinking about that this is a, a choral piece rather than a set of folk ballads and even though the melodies are going to stay quite folky and even though the the kind of mix and mash of old style language and new style language is a very folk oral tradition sort of trick. I started wanting to compose in such a way that uh, a large group of singers that are not necessarily professional, I don't mean rubbish, but I mean a fun, good quality amateur choir, if they picked up this stuff, they could go, oh, well, we can do this. And also that uh, creates the opportunity for pop up performances and for performances mm. by different kinds of groups. Yeah. Um, one example of that was uh, we did talk about and hopefully one day we might do this where you can put the choir in situ inside the America ground maybe even in in the alley around behind where the Brassy Institute is and where Rock House is which is right in the center of this actual location and you can and you can put a group of voices in there in the open air and it works as a uh, a choral piece. It's in your eyes and it's in your hair. Hemp dust burns in the open air. Run to the other end fast as you dare. Doing the rope walk tangle. Eight over three and seven over one. Weave those threads till your rope is done. Don't you step on the fibers, sun. Doing the rope walk tangle.
and then you try and sell the rope when it's made. Oh, when you're done, then you roll that rope till the boatman's door for some cash you hope. It's Edward Bomer and his brother Joe doing the rope walk tangle. Sir, it's worth more, and you hold out your cap. Lad, tell your master his weave is slack. Old John Gallop won't pay for that when he's doing the rope walk tangle. Eight over three and seven over one. Weave those threads till your back is gone. Don't you step on the fibers, son. Doing the rope walk tangle. You end up with two different feels. I'm, in some ways, especially when I just play it here, um, I don't think the slower version particularly works. Uh, it hasn't got um, an energy to it. But what happens is if you transfer that to a group of singers mm. and you have, so obviously in the background, you might have a very simple accompaniment or you might even just have a thud. And I'm a, a massive fan of the thud. Like you get a tom or you get a side drum mm. and you just boff it. Foreign, yeah. And one of the advantages with that as well, especially thinking about the music of the early 18th century, uh, of the late 18th century and the early 19th century, is that that is a huge part of our folk music at the time. Um, one of the other reasons I really like the, the rope walk as an idea is because it, it does, in a way, it does the same thing as the plank. It, you've got the layout of Hastings now affected by this alleyway that's really long, almost a mile long, that's like laid out specifically to make rope. You've also got all the classes there and um, you've, got the, you've got the fishing industry, you've got the, the more big kind of ocean going shipbuilding industry and you've got um, the person who's running, running the ends and ends of this rope walk trying to actually do the weaves. It's just, it's a really bottom end job. You've then got the masters of those people. So you've got a kind of hierarchy of, of employment in that same, in that one trade and loads of other things going on around it as well, loads of brewing. So you've got loads of, you've got booze being, and you've got um, these uh, garages for, especially later on in the America ground era, you've got garages for coaches for the trade, for the travel up to London. A lot of coaches are stored there and that makes it a kind of hotbed of import and export. I mean, it's this huge import and export is a huge part of, and that I don't necessarily mean, that's a really good, John, that's a really good um, link into um, another thing I was going to mention, which is this, this uh, which ties back to what I was saying earlier about the hulls of boats from the battles of the smugglers. Um, at the very beginning of our era, and, and actually as a holdover from the 1700s, you've got, um, uh, you've got a lot of smuggling going on. And that countercultural attitude that pervades in the America ground later on, I feel is very informed by the loyalty that local communities had to groups of basically legit fisher business people, so local business people who end up out of necessity smuggling. And it's not, I mean, some of it's even like, so they're smuggling with, with other businesses in France and we're at war with France. So that's extraordinary, but also they're just smuggling on moving goods along the coast. I've got a song uh, which is called The Murder of Captain Aldridge which is a song about, which tells the true story of, um, of Captain Aldridge, who was a captain of a boat that ran into trouble with the customs and excise men. And uh, they murdered him, they shot him as, uh, as they did. Now this is, this is the era before legitimate police forces. Um, in fact, in the town, in the America ground itself and in the town of Hastings at the time, the only kind of police you'd have is the old night watchman, you know, you didn't have, um, this is pre-Robert Peel, but um, uh, the most powerful, nasty, hardcore forces of the law, apart from the army, was the customs and excise men, and they were absolutely brutal. Um, so tell us a bit about um, Captain Aldridge then. What was, uh, what was the story behind his murder? Well, they just, they caught him. Uh, they caught the boat. There's a, there's a customs and excise boat that was really slick and well, a really proper, like fast boat called the Leopard. And the Leopard caught Captain Aldridge and his men out at sea and they, and they, 
uh, dragged the boat. They and they basically shot him dead. And then um, one of the reasons that we know it's a beginning of a kind of real hotbed of anger and activism is because um, the uh, in the at his funeral. Well, I'm going to sing. I'm sort of introducing what I'm going to sing. So maybe I'll just um, sing the mm. sing the song. Yeah, go for it, Chris. Yeah. I'll start from his funeral. I'll tell you what, John, I might add my drone into the keyboardy sound and see what it sounds like with it all mixed together. Can you actually hear it all? Yeah, I could hear that. Oh, cool. Well, they put him in the ground at All Saints Church and a crowd of people came alongside the grieving family and anger grows the same and a fury at the rich man's court where nothing good is done and a fury at the customs man so quick to shoot his gun willful murder that it was said the world and of the church shows us all where he's written it down in the all saints register men like captain aldridge are the lifeblood of this town they brand a good man a criminal smash his boat and shoot him down They take our boys for Boney's War, give our town to Wellesley's army. But if bread costs more than a man can afford, there ain't no honest work for me. You ain't no fucking Napoleon, you ain't no mad King George. Let the word ring out across the ground, we ain't gonna give you any. So one of um, my feelings about the myth versus the truth thing is that you can finesse aspects of or focus on aspects of the story without denying their underlying truth. So for me, um, the every detail in the Captain Aldridge story that I've put into the song is accurate. It really is. So it's all the right names and the one of the key pieces of the history that legitimise the accusation that he was murdered is the church warden writing that it was murder in the register at All Saints Church. And once that happened, it can't be unwritten. That's written into the church ledger. So that's a really important bit of the document. Um, and so I really wanted to include those details. But at the same time, the bit that's slightly finessing is, for me, the this idea that the this specific event is a kind of a triggering event for rebellious revolutionary feeling among the people of the America grounds. Mm. So in the placement of the song in my collection of tunes, that will be there where once that's happened, I'll start telling stories of people being much more um, political or, or tell stories of the, maybe go to the point about the flag raising. And so it almost sounds like I've sounds like that happened, and then suddenly everyone refuses to pay their taxes. And whereas the truth is, obviously, that's a much earlier event. It doesn't directly. Um, it's not like Captain Aldrich's funeral triggers everyone being revolutionary, but it did happen. There was a big crowd that showed up. He was very popular in town. He was considered to have been murdered unjustly, even though he was out smuggling. Because the point was, this took place. Uh, very early in the 19th, 19th century and it was before that reform act so people really had no way of surviving if they didn't have an income and so it was drastically unfair that these and you know people were not people were not really profiteering from smuggling they were smuggling as a as a daily bread business so as you develop the composition it sounds to me like you want to thread a narrative through it and you, it, it certainly feeds from the early parts of the, the cycle of songs through to the latter part of the cycle of songs and you're you're telling a kind of you're you're, you're painting a kind of a political picture here in order yeah. aren't you 
I am. I the bits that resonate most powerfully for me are one that this is a really fascinating place that then gets taken away. Mm. Two that in such hotbeds of life and thriving and and often out of control. You know, it wasn't easy life there, and it was rough. And there are lots of fights and battles and things that go on there, and it's 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 rough and ready. And we know those places now, but the the snobbery and alienation that is put upon them is far more than it really is. And then also those places are also where a lot of the greatest aspects of our spirit comes from. There's, there's a real, there's an amazing community there. There's uh, amazing um, ideas that come out of the place and, and energy that comes out of it. It would be really amazing if, um, absolutely. So this yeah. piece of work, you're, as you've said before, you're making it so that other people can perform it. Um, yes. Part of the plan is to hand it on to others in the town, isn't it? It so is. Talk about that briefly. I'm really, I mean, I'm really excited about this. It's such a great idea. It wasn't my idea. It's part of how you develop the project, but uh, I really love it. I'm going to record very simple, um, clear sounding, minimal demo recordings of what I think will be either 12 or 13 songs and they'll form this sequence. They do, they do stand alone. A lot of, I think pretty much all of them stand alone as songs, but they do have this thread running through. It's partly a thread of a plank of wood. It's also the thread of the story of the America ground chronologically. So it starts at the beginning and you get the, you get the eviction towards the end of the bunch of songs. And then after the eviction, you've got a kind of quiet, desolate, derelict moment at the end so it does tell the story i think in sort of way in a in an interesting way i won't impose very much arrangement on it i'm gonna very minimally arrange it mm. record it um i'm gonna try and um, get a couple of local singers to sing it rather than me or with me so that um there are different voices the recorded version and the score the vocal score will have fixed melodies I mean, that, I don't mean that that means people have to sing, but it means that people will know what the melody is so that they can sing it. And at that point, I will, you all have it. And then the idea would be people could, if they want to play with the recordings, they could remix the recordings and do something interesting with that. But also people can hopefully take the score and arrange it in a different way and perform it in a different way. My dream now, because I took this little journey from creating a folk piece to a, to a, what is a chorale, I hope is a chorale, um, will be. My dream would be for a choir to be able to perform it with a minimal, mm. um, with a very minimal accompaniment. <coughs> I think if that works, I'll be really happy. That's fantastic. I think we're heading towards doing that in the summer. <coughs> Assuming that we're all allowed out again in, in public, um, I believe that MSL uh, will be in position to get to that part of developing it um at least in the summer or on the other side of that so that's fantastic thanks very much for talking to us today chris oh no thanks for having me it's been fascinating yeah great stuff fantastic all right then let's finish now um do you want to play us out with a little bit of something uh song. just finish off with a little bit it's elton john it up Well, they put him in the ground at All Saints Church. A crowd of people came, can't sing, alongside the grieving family. And anger grows the same. And a fury at the rich man's court, where nothing good is done. There's fury at the customs man, so quick to shoot his gun. And world for murder that it was, said the warden of the church.